Well, it is the calm before the storm. Wind, rain, snow all on the way here. Thanks for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rompoy. Yeah, it's about to get colder as mm. Evan's been warning us. So let's talk about this. What are we bracing ourselves for now? <laughs> the, the final day of dry skies, at least during the day okay. today. Okay. And right. then a daily opportunity at rain moving forward. Enjoy the sunshine that we start off the morning with in about a half hour. It's going to be likely the final morning where we have that complete sunshine out there. Want to point out the little caption down there. It says PM showers. So don't expect these showers to be uh, all too commonplace for the morning and afternoon. It's really not until closer to about 6 to 8 PM that we'll see that chance really steadily climb. We'll also make it to the 60s today before dropping out of the 50s with that big push of Arctic air. We're gearing up for it, not just here in San Diego, but as really the western U.S., you can see how many watches, warnings, advisories are covering uh, the western U.S. just in pink and purple and uh, and that tan color on the screen. So we'll walk you through the storm that is uh, about to make its arrival tonight into tomorrow. We'll let you know what to expect in just a few minutes. All right, Evan, thank you for tracking it for us. And now taxing drivers four cents per mile. Think about that. Think about how many miles mm. you drive. This could still become a reality for San Diegans. Hundreds of dollars it could be for you. Last year, Sandag struck down this proposed mileage tax plan, but an alternative proposal has yet to be considered. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live with some of the concerns brought up during this uh, town hall that happened last night. Chris? And look, gas is expensive enough as it is, and there's already a gas tax. And some people are scratching their heads wondering why this keeps coming back and how simply they would even be able to afford this. Low income and fixed income like seniors. And so they're going to be hit hard with this new tax. And so this mileage tax is part of Sandag's $165 billion transportation plan. It's part of the funding for that. The goal is the, of the plan is to build a free public transit system over the next 30 years. It would be four cents per mile. Now, the reason why what it's being called is so important is because anything determined and titled as a tax can't be passed without voter approval. So some watchdogs have pointed out uh, what they call this, a fee, a charge, or a tax will be vital. Now, the group that organized last night's meeting is rallying against uh, support, or excuse me, is rallying support against the proposal now. That includes a number of local leaders like El Cajon Mayor Bill Wells, who says he has a lot of folks in his community that commute into San Diego and could be facing a lot of charges here if this does indeed go through. It's hard to make ends meet right now. And when you talk about it and adding another four cent per mile, that's going to add another $800 to $1,000 per car per household. Some folks can afford that, but a lot of people can't. And to take a look at your screen right here, we did a little bit of the math. Let's just say that you drive 15 miles for work. You drive 15 miles back home. That's 30 miles a day, five days a week, 52 weeks a year, assuming you don't take any time off. But look, that's around $312. Now let's assume that anyone else in your family is also driving. We're not even throwing in the miles that people drive for, let's say, vacation or to go to the gym, etc. So again, this is looking like it could potentially cost drivers a lot of money. Now we did reach out to Sandag and we ended up speaking with Chair Nora Vargas, again, also the chair for the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, and she told us they are still trying to figure out how to add this all up, how to do the math with this plan by removing it, but ultimately they say it's up to the state. Eric and Netta. Chris Grove reporting live. Chris, thanks for that. And this morning, eight children are safe after being rescued in a major human trafficking operation here in San Diego. 48 people were, at, were arrested in what authorities are calling Operation Better Pathways. Local, state, and federal officials will share more details on this in about three hours here at 930. There can be, like, bad people here, and, like, I just don't want to, I don't feel that safe, like, just coming here by myself after seeing what happened. I thought they were going to shoot me. Those two children are talking about a fatal shooting that happened in broad daylight at the North Claremont Recreation Center. It happened on Sunday. Friends of the 22-year-old victim tell us his name was Cesar Lopez. He made a name for himself as a rapper who went by Allo Bands. Police are still searching for two suspects. Now community members want to reclaim the park for families and are calling for increased security measures. They will hold a rally at the rec center Saturday at noon.
What you're hearing right there would be the sound of air raid sirens. As President Biden walked through the capital city of Ukraine, this morning he is now in Poland. In about two hours, he'll deliver a speech there to rally allies across Europe to support Ukraine nearly one year now after Russia's invasion. This comes amid new concerns that China is considering sending weapons to Russia. And this morning, three people are dead. 200 others are hurt after yet another earthquake in Turkey. This one, another big one. It was a 6.4 magnitude earthquake that hit yesterday. More than 46,000 people have been killed since the first quake hit Turkey and Syria earlier this month. Yesterday, the U.S. announced $100 million in disaster relief. And I checked with the State Department website. It brings the total now to $285 million. And remember the baby born, born under the rubble? This was in Syria, that newborn. Well, this morning, she is in her new home after leaving the hospital. There's the baby being held right there. Sadly, though, her mother, her father, and four siblings all died in the earthquake. Let me step aside so you can see that sweet face. The baby has been adopted by her aunt and uncle. They renamed her Afra after her mother. All right, let's turn to baseball now. Just three days away now from the Padres' first spring training game. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live in Peoria, Arizona to bring us up to speed on the Manny Machado contract talks. I know a lot of uh, fans weighing in on this one. They want to see him uh, back on the squad here. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Eric. And a lot of the conversation with so many of the fans that showed up to that first day, all of those players were there. They want to keep Manny, and they say the Padres need to pay any price, and that is a lot of money. Uh, but something else that a lot of people are talking about and something that you at home might need to know about is the Major League Baseball is actually instituting three key rule changes that's going to change baseball in the way it may not have seen in years. So you're taking a look at video. This is from yesterday. Uh, a lot of those players are actually implementing these brand new rules during spring training, figuring out how to get those kinks out before they hit those major league uh, games starting in March. So we're going to start off with one of the most interesting changes, bigger bases. They will now be 18 inches by 18 inches instead of 15 by 15. This is to help reduce the risk of injury by allowing more space for players to move around the bases and also to encourage players to steal more often. Now there's also a controversial shift ban. As a pitch is thrown, a team must have four players on the infield dirt with two players on each side of the base. Now the next, we're going to move on to pitching changes, a brand new pitch clock. It's designed to speed up the pace of play. It has a 15 second timer between pitches with no runners on and a 20 second timer with runners on. Batters will also have 30 seconds to switch out. Now, which Padres will have to work quicker on the mound next season? Some might, some not. We did ask Joe Musgrove about this change and how he's going to adapt with his pitching. Yeah, I'm trying not to, not to complain or not to, you know, you know, gripe about it too much. You know, it's a reality what we got to do. So you got to find ways to make adjustments. And you know, you look in in July, August. You know, no one's going to be thinking twice about it. It's going to kind of be second nature. Everyone will be used to it. So there is going to be an adjustment period and a little bit of that transition, you know, struggle. But um, you know, finding ways. We've already we've been talking for months now about you know ways to kind of get around some of the things or ways to you know have it benefit us and not the hitters. Um, so we have some ideas, but until we get into games, it's going to be hard to really know how it plays out and what the pace really is like with all the other stuff aside from just putting a clock up or throwing bullpens. You know. And the spring training game, the first one starts on Friday against the Seattle Mariners, and we are 38 days away from opening day, March 30th. So they do have a lot of time to get those kinks out during spring training, but I do want to let you know a lot of people are already showing up. This area right here, this is where the players drive in. So I've seen a lot of them trickle in this morning. They'll start to work out a little bit later, and we'll bring you maybe some of that uh, behind-the-scenes workouts, hopefully, before the morning show ends. I'll get back there and see if there's any action going on, so stick with us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun out here, just another day here spring training. Yeah. Uh, Eric and Netta, I wish everybody was out here because we had Jake, we had Heather and her yeah. family. It was a blast. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of uh, San Diego families out there right now trying to get those autographs and see their favorite it players. It's fun to see all yeah. those kids lined up with their hats and anything that they yeah. could get signed. So it's cool awesome. that the players are doing that. Thank you, Dana Thank Marie. Thank you, Dana Marie.
check it in with Evan here. You, you know, uh, so these pitchers are up against the clock now, and you're all, you're constantly up against the clock mm -hmm. with your forecast. That's I mean, they just give you a window, and you got to stick it, man. So <laughs> sometimes it's just a shot in the dark, and then we hope that the models come into agreement. So you later should, on. you and Joe should talk yes. about what it's like to, to be up against we? the clock. I, I wish we were paid similarly. Gosh, <laughs> Ooh, that yeah, we were talking about those salaries that they're getting yeah. and how this is uh, a big business and. Uh, it was impressive coming from someone who is not a, a big sports watcher. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on out here. My forecast does involve quite a bit of uncertainty, but it's mainly as we head toward the end of the week, close to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, where there's still a bit of a question mark over how much rain will be seen. Going into tonight and early tomorrow, looks like accumulations are going to stay close to a tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch. Here is that western U.S. map where you've got entire states covered in winter storm warnings. That's the pink on the screen. We've got winter weather advisories. You've got the tan and yellow colors on the screen showing wind related advisories. That goes mostly for the state of California, moving into Arizona, New Mexico, for example. And when we look at satellite radar imagery right now, we don't have much going on. That's because this is what you could call the calm before the storm, right? Storm is going to start plunging south from tonight into early tomorrow. That's what will generate the wind for us and that chance of rain. Clouds are going to start to build afternoon. We'll see that chance of rain steadily build as well by 6 p.m. We're at a 60% chance and that's going to continue with light showers through the overnight hours. How gusty is it going to get? Well, we'll start with winds over the mountains and deserts and then countywide we will feel those 40 and 50 mile per hour gusts even up in Oceanside and Del Mar. It is a strong westerly breeze that we're going to start to see. So absolutely possibility of some damage related to down trees or power lines with those 40 and 50 mile per hour gusts. Traffic this morning is light. So far, no major crashes or collisions popping up on our screen. We've got one that we've been watching for the last uh, about hour or so just on the right hand shoulder. We have a uh, right hand shoulder blocked on the 78 westbound at Civic Center Drive. No major backups related to it. Now to Eric back to you.